Hey guys, welcome to another video on uh, the topic of traditional machine learning where we'll learn about feature ranking using something called Baruta. And I truly believe that traditional machine learning is highly underrated. Everyone is jumping on to this deep learning because whether you're in uh, uh, you know, academia, you want to publish a paper with something cool, you know, putting deep learning or whether you're trying to go find a new job, you know, of course deep learning is very important. Having those skills is important, but not every problem requires deep learning or not every problem can be solved using deep learning. Traditional machine learning has a lot of tools that uh, that you can use for many, many, many problems, right? I mean, even in the last few videos where we talked about LGBM or XGBoost or Random Forest or Support Vector Machines, these are all amazing, amazing classifiers or regressors that you can use for many of these uh, traditional problems. Now, uh, one thing that uh, we often run into, especially when you look at these tree-based algorithms, Random Forest or XGBoost or so on, uh, are all features usable? There are certain tricks, right? I mean, I talked about using principal component analysis to remap your input features into a new dimension, but that, that doesn't mean you're selecting the right features. You're just uh, condensing the information into, into a different dimension and potentially losing some information. Yeah, how it reflects in classification or your regression, that's a different point, but uh, uh, feature selection in general can be a uh, very useful thing to do if you want to save some time and resources, right? So uh, how do you do feature selection? One thing that I kind of like is uh, something called Baruta. I'm going to explain what it is and let's actually look at our trail, you know, the data set that we always use uh, for these type of uh, exercises, which is the Wisconsin breast cancer data set. But this can be applied to anything where you have many, many, many features and you're trying to identify, okay, what are the top five or 10 that I should be using? So here's a quick screenshot of what you'll see later on. Okay, so this feature texture uh, has a rank of one. It's uh, this algorithm is telling me, yes, keep it. Okay, and don't keep this. It has a rank of 22. It has nothing to do. It's not contributing anything. So this is the essence. Now, there are many ways of actually doing this uh, feature selection. Like it's, it's, a, it's obviously I just mentioned, it's very uh, important because when you feed in, it's not just the speed, but when you feed in uh, vague and uh, useless data, it may decrease the, your model's proficiency, okay? Uh, there are many feature selections, and I'm gonna talk about this video is about Baruta. It's actually built around uh, random forest. Intrinsically, it gives you the uh, feature ranking. And uh, it can be used on any of these three models, whether it is random forest, XGBoost, or LGBM, uh, any of these, uh, both for classification and regression. And uh, like GBM, which we covered in the last two, three videos, uh, uh, also can be used for this. Uh, again, these are all tree-based, so uh, that's another approach. And chi-squared is probably the traditional way, but again, I'm not gonna talk about these two. Let's just focus on Baruta for this, uh, specific, for this video. And uh, at a high level, how does Baruta actually work? Well, it creates something called shadow features, meaning it random, uh, randomly selects some features and shuffles the values in these columns. And it's, it's, it's almost like it creates a new set of uh, uh, features, obviously called shadow features here, okay? And then it trains a random forest or XGBoost. As a user, you can select, okay, what to use for Baruta. Is it random forest or is it XGBoost, okay? And calculate the feature importance via mean decrease in Gini impurity. What does that mean? Like if you remember, if you watched my random forest video, when uh, we print out the feature importance and one of the things that you get out of this random forest, because it calculates this Gini impurity uh, when it's splitting the data, that can be used to rank the feature, saying that, hey, this feature actually contributed uh, very little, or this feature contributed a lot, right? So that's the information you get from these tree-based algorithms, and that's exactly why you can calculate the feature importance, okay? And it checks if real features have higher importance compared to the shadow features, right? All we are doing is shadow features, do random forest or XG boost, okay? And then check if real features have higher importance compared to these shadow features, and repeat this multiple iterations, and if original feature performed better, mark it as important. If not, mark it as not important, okay? That's it. Again, I'm doing this at a high level. If you really would like care to learn more about this, please go to the original documentation, get more information, okay? Let's uh, jump into the code to quickly see how uh, we, can, we can use this on our Wisconsin breast cancer dataset. 
Okay, so uh, here is uh, the code again. I'm going to share this. Please look at the link down below uh, for my GitHub page where you can download this. So please pay attention to this video and not take notes. If you're like me, uh, I suck at taking notes and listening at the same time. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, maybe you're a bit more gifted. So, <laughs> okay, uh, let's start uh, by talking about uh, Baruta for a library. Yeah. You just need uh, to install this pip install Baruta. I think there is another variation. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use, but this is the one I'm going to use. Baruta with uppercase B O U R uh, uh, R U T A. Okay, pip install this. And uh, now let's go ahead and import our libraries. Again, I'm going to use this Wisconsin breast cancer data set, which probably you know what that is. If I describe this data set, it has a whole bunch of uh, uh, features, right? And how many of these are useful? This is our exercise for today. There are 32 of these. Uh, two uh, we know that are useless. One is the ID, which is the ID of the patient, I guess. And the other one is uh, uh, the diagnosis, right? Is this uh, is this uh, uh, malignant or benign, for example? Yeah. So that is our y value. So that's useless. So out of the remaining thirty, how many are useful? That's exactly what we are going to uh, look at uh, later on. So let's do our data handling and look at the value counts. Uh, so you can see that I have three fifty seven benign and two twelve malignant, right here. So these are the labels. Okay. And uh, let's actually define our y as our uh, labels dot values, right? Now, if you look at our y values, this should be m and b. Again, these are not useful for fitting a model, so let's convert them into one or zero. And the way we do that is using label encoder. Again, I covered this in many videos, but you never know who is watching, so I try to talk about these in every video, okay? So we convert these into one and zeros. So our label one is malignant, zero is benign. So far, so good. Now let's define our X. X is every column except for the columns label label and ID because these do not define uh, whether it is a malignant or benign, right? So they do not have an effect. So these are this is our X. So if you look at our X, we have 569 data points, 30 features, okay? If I open this again, you'll see 30 features and each feature has different ranges like this is like 20, this is 120, this is 1000, this is 0 0.09. So let's go ahead and normalize them or scale them to same, uh, to same uh, you know, uh, range. So for that, let's do standard scalar. But before doing that, let's extract our feature names in case we need to plot them later on. But here is our scalar transform. So here we are using standard scalar to transform them to values between, if I open the same thing, to values between certain minimum and certain maximum, and these are all standard scaled. Okay, now let's uh, split our data into training and testing so we can check the validation or validity or, of our data. Again, all of this many, many, many times we have done this, uh, so no need to explain them. So what do we have up until now? We have a uh, X set of X values for training corresponding y values as labels, set of y, uh, x values for testing and corresponding y values. This is what we have, okay? Now, let's uh, define our Baruta. How do we do that? Like I mentioned earlier, Baruta can use random forest or XGBoost or any of these three models, right? So first let's define what do we want to use. Let's use XGBoost for now, okay, instead of random forest. So let's do XGBoost as XGB and define your model. My model is xgb.xgb .xgb classifier. You can define all the parameters in here if you want. Okay, I'm leaving it uh, open, meaning it's uh, it's taking all the default parameters. There you go. That's it. Now, let's import Baruta, uh, and from Baruta, let's import Baruta Pi. Okay, so that's what we are importing. This is the class. This is this is the feature uh, selector that we are trying to use. And now let's define our feature selector as Baruta Pi using the model that we just defined using xgb classifier okay and uh, you can define the number of estimators like number of trees uh, but i'm just saying auto right there and you can define other parameters i'm not doing any of that i'm just using all the defaults right there the only thing i defined is the model which is xgb classifier okay so once you do that we just need to fit it fit it on what our training data uh, which is X train and Y train. So the feature selector dot fit. 
This is just like training anything else. You see how it's actually going through many iterations right there. Uh, it's actually doing 100. You can define how many iterations it needs to go through. And it also is telling me, hey, you just defined only these, but you can actually define a whole bunch of other parameters like learning rates and all that stuff, okay? So you can play with all of these. So for now, we just did uh, fit or Baruta pi onto our training data. Now what? Now let's go ahead and look at a couple of, uh, let's print a couple of things here, okay? So first of all, let's do feature selector dot support underscore. What does that do? This actually gives us whether a feature needs to be accepted or not, right? False, true, false, true. This is not that useful. Let's actually go ahead and print the ranking part. This gives you even more information, okay? So feature selector dot ranking. It actually ranks like, okay, the first feature uh, is ranked five. The next one is ranked one. One is obviously uh, the best. 21 means not good, okay? That's as simple. So, uh, so this is it. So this is your rank and we are going to, uh, print out all of these in a second so it makes even more sense. But once you do this, okay, now you have a feature selector that's trained to identify the best features. But I want my original data to be transformed such a way that I only have these trained features. How do you do that? Feature selector dot transform transform what? Transform my training data. So that's exactly what I'm doing and I'm assigning this to a variable called filtered x or x filtered, okay? So let's run this. So if you look at, actually before doing that, if you look at x train here, this is our 426 data points with 30 features, right? 30 columns. Now we say uh, not all of these are useful. This is useful that is useful, these are all useful, right? So when I do this transform, it's going to give me a subset of this. So when I run this, now let's look at X filtered. You see, I only have seven columns here. So out of 30 features, it's telling me that only seven are useful, everything else is useless, so I'm only picking the seven, that's it. So uh, I hope this makes sense. So now let's go ahead and rank these, or print these feature ranks. I should have done this earlier. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, uh, capturing these feature ranks, but now let's go ahead and print it, okay? For feature in feature ranks, go ahead and uh, print these. Again, uh, this is just a print statement. So now you can actually see, get the full description here. Radius mean, it has a rank of five. Do we wanna keep it? No, false, okay? Uh, texture mean, rank of one, keep it, true. So this is how you can actually get your feature ranking. And, uh, Basically, when we did uh, dot transform, it's applying this and saying only keep these. And uh, apparently we have seven of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we have seven of these columns. So uh, there you go. So now if you would like to continue, let's open this up a bit. Now, uh, now what? Now we have, we know how to transform our input data. So, we only pick the features that matter. And now we just need to use that and fit it to either random forest or XGBoost or whatever you want, okay? So that's the next part. So let's just use XGBoost, uh, you know, and then uh, define XGB model and model.fit, fit what? Previously, we fit this to the entire data, which is our X test, uh, sorry, X train. Now we are only fitting this to X filtered, which is only the seven columns, it should be even quicker now. There you go, done. Okay, now uh, now let's go ahead and uh, apply this model onto the testing data set like we normally do. Again, please don't be confused. This XG boost up here that we define is the model for Baruta Pi to identify the best features. Now that we identified it, we transformed our input data, okay? to extract only the features or to keep only the features that matter and drop everything else that doesn't matter. That's all we're doing. That's what the, the, the uh, sorry, that's what this line does, dot transform. So now I have a new X that I'm using to fit a model. In this case, I also chose XGBoost, but you can choose anything else, okay? So that's basically it. So when we run these three lines, it's actually done. And now let's apply the train model onto our testing data set like we normally do, okay? But before doing that, your X test has 30 features, 
but we only need the exact seven that we trained this model on. So for that, let's go ahead and transform our X-Test using the same feature selector. So if you look up here, X-Test filter also has seven columns. Now it's ready to be predicted. Or, uh, so let's go ahead and do the prediction. I hope this makes sense, okay? And now let's go ahead and print the accuracy. Is the accuracy good? Is the accuracy bad? So 97.2%, I'll let you do the exercise where you don't select these features and fit it to the entire data, the accuracy would be almost identical, okay? And confusion matrix, did it do a good job, bad job? Let's go ahead and do the plot. Not bad, 88, 51, three and one misclassified, okay? So uh, I hope you learned something new here. Again, to summarize this, Baruta uh, or Baruta Pi from Baruta library is, uh, a, is the one that we are using for feature uh, selection and we transform our input data, whether it is for semantic segmentation or it doesn't matter. Remember, if you are trying to do semantic segmentation, you're gener uh, in my previous example, we used VGG16 uh, trained on ImageNet and we got 64 features, but we don't know if all 64 are useful. Do exactly the same exercise. Find which ones are useful and get a subset of your data uh, to train faster. Okay, so uh, once you do that, then uh, the training part is easy. So again, uh, I hope this, uh, this is useful for you guys and please go ahead and subscribe if you want more such content and keep asking questions about, hey, how do I do this or give suggestions so others can benefit. Make this discussion, you know, these, these comments uh, a bit more engaging so others can be uh, benefiting from these. Uh, it's not just a QA and a for me, I hope. Uh, uh, the community can help out each other. So thanks again and let's meet again in the next video.